Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 3, so I'm going to be talking about my Christmas, holiday, wintry book recommendations. I never really wear my hair like this. I usually have it so you can like see this bit, but I might regret this when I'm editing, but we're just gonna roll with it right now. So if you guys missed it, yesterday was Bookmas Day 2 and I helped you guys with recommendations for books to buy for your friends, for yourself. I will link it down below. That's a hard one to explain quickly, but I will have that video as well as the Bookmas playlist linked down below for you guys. So today I have some fun festive reads to share with you. I have read my fair share of like Christmassy books or wintry books and I feel like I found some really great ones. I'll show you guys the ones that I'm planning on reading this year actually. So I have six, is that six? I can't count. Yes, six. I have six of these on my TBR for this year. If you want to know more about them, I will link Bookmas Day 1 down below for you guys, but they are definitely at the top of my December TBR, so excited to get to these. But without further ado, let's just get into the festive book recommendations. So I'm going to start off with a couple of classics that I think are worth the read. First, I have The Nutcracker by E.T.A. Hoffman. This one I read two years ago now, actually, for my Christmas 24-hour readathon, and I found it definitely worth the read. It's, it's very weird, but I did enjoy my time reading it. Like, I didn't love it, but I do think that it is worth checking out, especially if you love the Nutcracker Ballet. I think it just, it gets you into that festive mood for sure, which is why I think it is a great one. But it's not something I would reread, but I did enjoy it that one time, at least in my memory. We're off to an interesting start for this video, apparently. But next is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This one I actually got, I think it was last year in my stocking because it's a kind of facsimile of, I think that's the word, of the original edition. Super cute. But I'm sure you all know of A Christmas Carol, the iconic tale of Scrooge who is visited by the ghosts of Christmas past future and present. I said that in an interesting order, but in an effort to get him to change his ways and not be so selfish and greedy. And there's a reason why there's a million different versions of the movie for this. I feel like I've seen almost all of them. I definitely haven't, but like I've seen a lot of them. We own a lot of them at my parents' house, so I don't know which one would be my favorite. I do like the Jim Carrey one that came out recently, but there are so many options out there, truly. I think maybe because there's so many movies, there's something about this story that just gets me instantly in the Christmas mood. I think it is really heartwarming and it's interesting to think about yourself and how greedy you can be and I think it is like an introspective read. It definitely does have a moral to it but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So I actually read this for a class and it's the second Charles Dickens book that I have read but I would say it's my favorite. Next up is Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This one I read last year and it was such a pleasant surprise. It's not that I didn't think I was going to like it but I enjoyed it way more than I was expecting to. So in here we follow Sophie and Sophie had major plans for Christmas break. It was going to be great. She was going to make out with her boyfriend and stuff. It was just going to be an awesome time. But then her boyfriend ends up dumping her right before Christmas break. So she goes to spend some time with her extended family and her Nona comes up with a plan where her cousins and aunts and all her family members are going to set her up on 10 blind dates over the course of Christmas break to try and cheer her up. So these dates include like she's acting in a nativity scene. There's just like, there are so many things happening and it is an absolute blast. I think the fact that family comes into this one so much is something that really warmed my heart because that's the most important thing for me at Christmas season is to be with my family. This year is going to be different but I think that reading a book like this, maybe I'll reread it because reading a book like this just makes me remember how much I appreciate my family and love spending the holidays with them. But it also has such a cute romance and it just manages to be a really fun story but it does also have like an emotional level to it. I just think it's the perfect quintessential Christmas read but 
you also could really read it whenever it just it is very festive but I do think you could read it any time of year and still really enjoy it. Next up is One Day in December by Josie Silver. This is another kind of any time of year read because well part of it is set at Christmas and in the winter season and those like holidays do play a key role in it. It's set over the course of 10 years so it's not just at Christmas but the beginning of it is around Christmas and then like I said as you go through the years it does come up every year and it is prevalent to it. So this is like a missed connection sort of thing. The main character sees this guy through the bus window, falls in love, and then he's gone. But he's not gone forever because she meets him again at a Christmas party when her best friend introduces him as her new boyfriend. So obviously that kind of complicates things. I once I was really surprised by this one actually because I had no clue what to expect going into it but it reminds me of Love Rosie which I loved the movie for I don't think I'm really interested in reading the book but that's kind of exactly what it reminds me of I think something about the angst and the like you want it to happen but you also don't want it to happen but like it's just so much and I think a really big part of it was the chemistry between the two of them was so poignant it's just Oh, this book kind of like crushed me, but in a really good way at the same time. Next up is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I don't know where my copy of this book went, to be honest, but this one I should have talked about earlier because it's a Christmas Carol retelling. I have never read one before. I'm all for Christmassy retellings, but there really aren't that many. There's one that is written by Heather Dixon, who's the author of, what's it called? Entwined, which was a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, but she has a Nutcracker one but I think it's self-published so I couldn't really find it anywhere which is tragic but it's called The Enchanted Sonata so if I can find that at some point I would like to read it but anyways Christmas Carol retelling so this is all about our main character who she was visited by the ghosts of Christmas past present and future way back in the day I mean not that long ago but she was visited by them in an effort to get her to not be so selfish and change her ways but she was just kind of like nope and she didn't change anything and and now she has died and now she is working for Project Scrooge as the latest ghost of Christmas past. This was a super interesting take on A Christmas Carol because it's kind of like modern so it's a bit of a twist on it like there's kind of a fantastical element it's just very different and unique. It is kind of difficult to read at times just because the protagonist is obviously not the most likable character like the whole thing is she's selfish she's a screw she's not a great person but there is still such an element of the festive spirit and just the joy that comes along with Christmas in there as you're watching her grow that is the best part of it because she is like sometimes you just want to like slap her because it's very annoying but overall it is a great Christmas read and definitely a very different one because I feel like all of these actually yes all of them are contemporary because that's generally what Christmas reads are they're contemporary romantic stories so it's nice to have a little bit of a twist on that actually speaking of a nutcracker retelling I have read Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire who is the author of Wicked but I wasn't a really big fan of that one it's very strange it's just Oh no, it's really weird. I do think like if you want to read something Nutcracker-esque that could be really interesting. I just didn't love it which is why I didn't want to include it on this list. Next is The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. This book is set over the course of 24 hours at Denver Airport. There has been this snowstorm so the main character is trapped there but she is also grieving the loss of her best friend. Her best friend died a year ago on Christmas, no not Christmas, New Year's Day. So she's trying to get home and obviously the next day since this is New Year's Eve is going to be really hard for her but she ends up running into this guy and they end up spending the time that they are trapped in the airport together. This is just like I feel like airports are kind of festive too. I just think of them when I think of Christmas because you know so many people going home for the holidays usually and the snowy element of it as well like this obviously is more of a New Year's story so kind of the wintry element but I still think I don't know everything about winter just makes me think Christmas even though I live in Canada so like there's snow way 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 past Christmas but still. This is definitely a very emotional and intense story for this time of year but I think you know we all could use a good cry 
cry every now and again. Next is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. If you haven't heard of this book before, I feel like maybe this year you probably have because it was adapted into a Netflix series. I haven't gotten the chance to watch it yet when I'm filming this, but fingers crossed I will be able to soon. But I read this and once again was really pleasantly surprised. I feel like, not that I have lower expectations going into like holiday and Christmas reads, but I feel like sometimes I struggle with them a little bit more and I don't know why, but this one was such a blast to read. However, the sequel I wasn't a huge fan of, The Twelve Days of Dash and Lily. I do have the next book on my TBR for this month, so I hope that that one will go a little bit better. I think it will. I'm more optimistic about it, but this follows Dash and Lily, obviously. So Lily has left this notebook full of dares at her favorite bookstore in New York City and Dash finds it and he goes across New York City taking all of these dares and it is just such a lovely love story. The atmosphere of New York City at Christmas time just permeates through it and I love that. I would love to go to New York at Christmas time one year. I think it would be absolutely amazing and this book just does such a great job of transporting you there and it also just the chemistry between the two of them it works very well you have bookstore in here like it's bookish it's basically everything a bookworm could want from a holiday romance next is carols and chaos by cindy anstey this book i I didn't love this one but I do want to mention it because I did think it was pretty good. So this is set in 1817 in England. It kind of makes me think of like Downton Abbey but Christmas time because it's set like at a manor and you deal with the characters who are working there and stuff. It was really fun. I think something about like sometimes 1800s stories that deal with Christmas just really make me feel the Christmas spirit. It's so hard to describe why something is Christmassy to me. I mean this one is set at Christmas but there's something about like old style Christmas that's just really low. I also wanted to mention Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. This has been out for a while now and it actually came out as a Netflix adaptation last year and I didn't love the adaptation but I do think the book is a lot of fun. The book is set on Christmas Eve and it follows three different stories, a bunch of different characters, all on this massive Christmas Eve snowstorm. So they all have their traditions, they all have their places that they're trying to go because it's Christmas Eve and it's all, it just comes crashing down because there's this giant snowstorm. I liked each of the stories individually kind of differently like some of them I really liked others I was kind of like meh about but overall it was a lot of fun to read very different but it does definitely get you into the Christmas mood. Speaking of actually anthologies there's also the 12 I can't think of what it's called but I can tell oh my true love gave to me which is a collection of 12 short stories Christmas stories that is edited by Stephanie Perkins so this was so much fun because you get lots of different stories in here. There's a little bit of something for everyone. So many different authors contributed to it and there are stories definitely in this one that I loved, some that I really didn't like, and some in the middle. So it's a little mix of everything but if you're looking for like something you can take the 12 days of Christmas and read like one story every day, I think that would be really fun. Next is Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz. I'm pretty sure this one was actually adapted into a Hallmark movie. It was supposed to be so if it hasn't happened yet, Maybe it's to come. I'm not exactly sure. I feel like there are a lot out there that are Pride and Prejudice retellings, but obviously that's what this is. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but it's gender bent because Darcy is the female character who is very successful in her career, but she's coming home for Christmas for the first time in a really long time to her parents' estate, and she ends up meeting with the neighbor who is our what is it? Bennett character. Elizabeth Bennett character. But what is his name? Luke Bennett. There we go. So yeah, they, he's like a slacker, blah, blah, blah. And they, they end up meeting and chemistry. The final book I wanted to talk about is Love and Other Trainwrecks by Leah Conan. This one is kind of similar to Chaos of Standing Still and Let It Snow because there is a giant snowstorm. This one is actually set after Christmas and after the holidays but like I said snowstorms just equal Christmas in my mind but the two characters are on this train and the train ends up just getting stuck because of the snow so they decide to go by foot to try and get to their destinations on time and they are stuck traveling together by foot in a snowstorm 
doesn't sound ideal and it definitely isn't. This just has such wintry, cozy vibes to it, so I feel like it's perfect for this time of year. So those are all of my Christmas slash holiday slash wintry book recommendations. I hope that some of the ones that I read this year I will have a little bit better luck with. I feel like last year just the ones that I read kind of underwhelmed me, except for Ten Blind Dates and One Day in December. Those really loved, but the rest I was kind of like meh about. So I hope with my stack this year I will have a little bit of better luck. I'm definitely a bit more optimistic, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you to find a Christmas wintry book recommendation. If you have any Christmas book recommendations, leave them in the comments down below because I would also like to check those out. But don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of the days of Bookmas. I will be uploading a new video for the entire month of December. You can also check the playlist down below so you can see what I've already done and you can turn on your notifications so you won't miss any of the new ones. But tomorrow for Bookmas Day 4 I'm going to be... I, I forget what I'm doing. I need to check my list. It's all blending together. I'm going to be talking about some books that you should put on your Christmas wish list based on like fantasy lovers or like historical fiction, stuff like that. So hopefully that will help you out and don't miss that tomorrow. I don't know what's happening in the end of this video, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for Bookmas Day 4. Bye! Mm -hmm.